So a little bit over a week ago, I finally finished my long-term review of NixOS, and boy was I happy to be done. Now there was obviously nothing wrong with NixOS, I just had been at it for a long time and I was ready to move on. So I took a little bit of a breather and I put out a poll asking what my next long-term review is. And in traditional Matt fashion, I'm ignoring the poll. <laughs> now, I will get to Void OS. That'll be the one that happens after the next one. So two long-term reviews from now, that'll be Void Linux. Because Void won in every poll that I put up. I put it on Mastodon, Discord, and on YouTube. Void won. So Void is after this one. But I have to admit that there's something else calling my name, so I decided to kind of squeeze it in first. And that is a immutable distro. Now, we're not supposed to call them immutable distros anymore because that term has kind of fallen by the wayside. These are other things, and that's going to be kind of my sticking point with this whole review because I want to find out what this thing is. So I hear so much about the Universal Blue project, about Ublue, and about Bluefin, and Aurora, and Bazai, all these distros that do cool things, and they're supposedly the next generation of Linux distro, and I want to find out why. Now, I've made several videos about immutable distros, but... I I mean, I think I understood them when they were immutable distros, but that stuff has kind of transitioned into something else these days. And I want to find a, kind of find out what all that stuff is about. So my next long term review is going to be Bluefin Linux or Bluefin DX or whatever they want to call it. Right. So this is the GNOME version of this project there is a kde version which i almost chose it was i think it's called aurora or something like that and i almost chose that one but i decided to go with the gnome version because it seems to be like the main one uh, i'm not sure if that's true or not i don't know honestly much about it other than what i've been told i haven't done a lot of digging yet i've basically just installed this thing so i'm very very much just learning so that's going to be my starting point now i have some pre-knowledge some knowledge in my head about immutables when I did the whole immutable thing and I'm trying to flush that stuff out and kind of start over because like I said a lot of that immutable stuff just isn't a, either a big deal or isn't here I'm not actually sure so I need to go through and find kind of, kind of find out what makes this thing different from the open SUSE that I use or the arch that you use or whatever right what what makes this thing supposedly next generation and what makes it different from everything that we've experienced over the course of the last 30 years. That's going to be my entire goal for this upcoming review is try to try to figure out what makes this thing tick and what makes it different than basically everything else. And if it is different, what makes it good? What what are the pros and cons and things like that? So that's the upcoming review is is the is Bluefin here and I have some early thoughts. First off, it installs like Fedora because it's based on Fedora. So if you're, you know, kind of brand new to this and you're wondering and you're worried kind of about the installation process, it was very, very easy if you've ever installed Fedora before. It's the Fedora Anaconda installer, or the, the old one. So it was very easy to install. And I will say another thing is that if you download the DX version, which is more for developers, and I, I downloaded that because I kind of wanted the whole kit and caboodle. Just be prepared that the ISO is very, very big. So uh, I'm not exactly sure uh, what all comes on here. I, I've, I have a vague idea of some of the stuff here. And I know that a lot of it's going to be for developers and developer focused. So I don't think that if you choose the non-developer option, you'll get such a big ISO. But I, I will say this about that. The days of small ISOs are pretty much over. Even regular Ubuntu has like a six gigabyte ISO these days. So small ISOs kind of going the way of the dodo, but it's still something to keep in mind if you d decide to download the developer icon or the, de the developer version, it's going to be a big like eight gigabyte ISO. Another thing that I've noticed, and I don't know that it's my hardware and I, and I don't know uh, if this is going to continue or whatever, because it has kind of gotten better, but at, on first boot, it was doing something. I don't know what it was doing, but it was doing something, and that something was enough for my computer to be slow. Very, very sluggish. Uh, it took a, a, a good 45 seconds or so for the terminal to actually open. I'm not sure what's going on. Now, if I were to close this terminal now and open it back up, it launches right away, right? It, it doesn't do you know anything 
uh, that abnormal. It was very, very swift. But the when I first launched into GNOME here, things were taking a long time to redraw. So when I tried to change the appearance settings, it took a long, a long, long time to load the wallpapers here, like almost a like maybe 40 seconds or so, like just to load this, these few wallpapers. It took a long time. Now, as you saw there, it loaded right up. So they're obviously cached somewhere there now, but it took a while on first boot. I'm not sure what was going on there. And other things were just kind of slow. Since then, since I've been running it now for a little while, it's just as speedy as anything else. But that, that initial first boot, it was doing something, and I'm not sure what it was. Now, I haven't done a reboot here yet, so I don't know if that's going to happen every time I reboot, or if that was just a one-off, or maybe it's just my hardware, or maybe it's because I'm using the giant uh, developer edition. I don't know what, what it was. I just know that it, on first boot, it was sluggish, and then it kind of sped up. So that's just something that I noticed, and I wanted to point out there now because, like I said, I've only been running it for a couple hours, so I don't got a ton of things to say. But other than that, this is a very uh, customized version of GNOME, even though it doesn't really look like it. So it has quite a few extensions installed. So if, if we type it extensions here, you get the extensions manager already install, installed. That's the way GNOME should be. It has... Uh, the GNOME extension manager already installed instead of that stupid limited version of the extensions manager that comes with Fedora uh, that does absolutely nothing other than allowing you to basically delete your extensions and turn them off. This one here allows you to install them and that's what should be default so that's good. It does come as you see with a, quite a few extensions installed. Not all of them enabled uh, surprisingly but the, you get a whole bunch of these things here that you can turn on and it just uh, is very customized, which I like. I do like a more opinionated version of GNOME because I feel that vanilla GNOME is just basically unusable. It, it, it's you can't use GNOME without a few extensions. That, but that's my opinion. So other people may not agree. Other people may call all of these extensions that are enabled and uh, are here installed bloat. I don't particularly care because if I if I come across something that I don't want installed, I can uninstall it. I'm not a moron. So, well, I'm, I am a moron, but I can at least uninstall something. So bloat doesn't bother me as much as it does other people. So that's another thing that I've noticed is that they've done a lot of work into making this kind of a customized version of GNOME, and I like that. Another thing that I've noticed is that this thing here is based on Fedora 39. Now, I know Fedora 30, 40 just came out not too long ago, but I think it was like April. So it it is an older version of Fedora. Now, I'm, I'm assuming that's because this is still a very new project and there's just a few developers working on it. Also, they may be holding it back to wait for the first point release or something like that. I don't know. But if you're looking for the like the latest and greatest version of Fedora, this is not going to be it. And also, I don't think that it matters that much. From what I understand, you're not going to be installing software from, you know, the repositories. You're going to be using Flatpak primarily. You're going to be using containers, things like that. And I, I know some of that vaguely. So I don't think that the version of Fedora is going to matter that much. But again, it's something that I thought I'd point out that it's not the latest version of Fedora. So there's that. So overall... It seems to be pretty good. Just a regular Linux distro from, you know, on the very surface level of stuff. Obviously, I haven't delved deep into what makes this thing tick yet. That's going to happen as I go through this long-term review. If there are things that you'd like to know about Bluefin, leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer those questions in the long-term review. It'll give me kind of an idea of what you guys are interested in finding out about this distro so I can kind of structure things the way that you would like. So, if you are interested in watching that long-term review, make sure you're subscribed because that's the only way to make sure you find it. So there you go. I did my YouTuber duties, uh, as they say. So that's it for this one. If you have thoughts on this upcoming long-term review, again, leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. I, I'm doing the whole Vanna White thing over here again. So thank you so very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. You can also head on over to the shop if you want to support me in other ways. You can go to shop.thelinkscast.org. That website apparently has been down for a week. It is back now. Thank you, DNS, for being a loaded piece of garbage uh, almost consistently throughout my entire life. Like, it's so... It's, it's always DNS. It's just... 
Always true. So, uh, but the shop should be back now. If you want to support me in the shop, shop.thewinscast.org. There you'll find a whole bunch of merch. It's all awesome. Check it out. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.